So in a previous video, we made this Martian soil simulant and today we're going to try and grow some crops in it. So first of all, I wanted to see what would happen if you just planted a seedling out in the open on the surface of Mars. So I took a pea sapling and I washed the roots to remove the soil and then I replanted it in my Martian soil simulant. Mars has lost most of its atmosphere, but the thin atmosphere that remains is 95% CO2. So to simulate that, I placed my sapling in the vacuum chamber and removed all the air and then I refilled the chamber with CO2 from this canister. And I greased the bottom of the vacuum chamber with some silicon grease to stop any oxygen getting in. So why are we doing this experiment in the first place? Well, you might remember from school that plants photosynthesize, where they take in CO2, turn it into energy and release oxygen. So could planting a forest on Mars be a cheap way of terraforming the planet? Well, I left the plant for three days and you can see it's not doing at all well. In fact, it's probably suffocated by now, because of course I didn't mention earlier that plants need to respire oxygen just like we do. And although they photosynthesize during the day, they need to respire all day and all night. So they won't be able to produce enough oxygen in the chamber before they suffocate and their metabolism shut down. So for the purposes of this video, let's imagine a Mars base is already established with a greenhouse with oxygen and light provided. Uh, that's what we're going to be simulating here by growing plants out in the open atmosphere, you know, of Earth. And I'm not going to be using any artificial lighting to help them grow, but it's worth noting that the sunlight on Earth is about twice as intense as sunlight on Mars because it's further away. So on a real Mars base, they might need to use some artificial lighting to help any plants grow. But will regular crops even be able to grow in this dusty alien dirt? Well, as we found out in the previous video, Martian soil is actually very similar to volcanic rock on Earth, which is prized for its rich nutrients. There's a couple of key differences though. The first one we touched on in the previous video, perchlorate, a toxic compound in Martian soil that would make any crops you grow in it inedible for humans. But there are ways to remove them, and I made my regolith simulant without any, so it'll be perfectly safe to grow crops in. And the second difference is that Martian soil contains no organic components, because there's no life up on Mars, as far as we know. So there's no dead plants, mulch, you know, to create that sort of rich topsoil. So technically, you can't call the stuff on Mars soil, because to be soil, it has to have an organic component. But for the sake of this video, regular soil, same thing. But these organic components that you find in Earth soil are very important. They provide a vital source of nitrogen, which is essential for plant growth. They also maintain the moisture content in the soil, by clinging onto the water like a sponge so the roots can constantly be moist and grow into it. Because you see Martian regolith is basically just rock dust so it's very dense and if you water it it will dry out very quickly because there's nothing to hold the moisture in there. So you have to water it quite a lot to keep the seeds moist. So to compensate for the lack of organics in our regolith we're going to add two things. First of all we're going to add some urea which is the main component of urine after water. So we're basically simulating astronaut pee. Urea is a nitrogen containing compound that slowly breaks down into ammonia, which the plant's roots can absorb as a nitrogen source. And to reduce the density and increase moisture retention of the regolith, we're actually gonna use this mineral called vermiculite, which has actually been identified on Mars. And it's actually this mineral that when you heat it up, it becomes very sort of light and porous. And it's used in gardens quite a lot to sort of break up quite dense clay soil to allow water to pass through it and air to get in. A Mars base could also use food waste or feces for this purpose. So when it comes to what to actually grow in the regolith, there's an interesting problem because it is so dense. If you try and grow something like a potato that grows underground, people have actually tried this in similar types of regolith and they actually come out very sort of like squashed and malformed because they can't physically push against the, the regolith. So for this video I've chosen three species that should give us a good range of seed types. So we've got kale, beet, and carrots and we're going to grow them as microgreens which means we're going to let them grow for about a week after they germinate get to about two or three centimeters high and then cut them and that leaves us with these really nutritious little stems that are actually really quick to grow and actually have a lot of nutrients and taste like the plant that they're supposed to be so the carrot ones actually taste like carrot even though they obviously don't have the actual vegetable on them but that's enough explaining let's try and grow some martian crops so I've got this planter here. We'll use one row per seed type. And the columns from right to left are Martian soil, Martian soil with urea, Martian soil with vermiculite, 
and earth soil as a control. After I added all the seeds, I sprayed them with this mister. And then I added a hood and a covering on it to keep them in low light. So after a week of germinating, you can see that some of the seeds have sprouted. And the vermiculite samples are actually doing the best, which I think shows the importance of keeping the seeds constantly moist. I might have not been watering the rest of them enough. And the seeds with urea in the soil actually seem to be doing much worse than without, which is surprising. So I think I actually put way too much urea in each cell. I put like four of the little beads in the soil, which is probably quite a lot. The beet seeds are very large and hard, so they seem to take longer to have the water soak into them before they start to germinate. I tried using this little mister setup to keep the seeds moist constantly without overwatering them. Over the next week, the beet samples caught up and the vermiculite samples did best overall. So I harvested the microgreens and they actually tasted really good, but you'd need a lot more than this to be able to feed a crew. So I repeated the experiment with just kale in all of the cells and I used the correct amount of urea this time to actually help the growth. So as you can see, this batch grew very well. I also experimented with this sort of incubation chamber using the mister for the pea and beet seeds, which are quite large, to sort of soak them for a few days gently before you plant them. So hopefully they grow a lot quicker when you actually go to plant them in the soil. And that worked okay, but I think these quick, reliable seeds like kale are probably gonna be the best option. I also made this Martian terrarium or Marsarium uh, out of some of the leftover regolith. So that's all for this video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other ideas for what I should do with this regolith simulant or anything else I should grow in them.